My name is Tracy Woodruff, and I'm a professor and director of the UCSF Program on Reproductive Health and the Environment, a research and research translation program within the UCSF Department of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Sciences. We are exposed to industrial chemicals every day through the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. We are also exposed to toxic industrial chemicals from the products that we have in our homes, like furniture, building materials, and cleaning supplies, and from the products we put on our bodies, like shampoo and cosmetics. Industrial chemicals have grown in their use and production since the 1950s, over 15-fold. Today, there are over 80,000 chemicals that are registered for use by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and about 6,000 of these chemicals are used or imported in large quantities. We only have good information for about less than 10% of these chemicals about their exposures and their potential to harm health. Industrial chemicals are used in many ways, and they get into our homes, communities, and our bodies. Data from the government show that everyone is exposed to many and varied industrial chemicals all at the same time. Industrial chemicals that are ubiquitous in our environment have the ability to interact with our bodies in ways that can produce adverse health consequences. Exposures that occur among women and men of reproductive age and pregnant women are of special concern. That is because during the time around conception or during pregnancy, developing humans are highly vulnerable to exposure to toxic chemicals. Unique and sensitive biological processes that are highly orchestrated occur during pregnancy and childhood. If exposure to industrial chemicals alters this biological programming, it can lead to health consequences that may manifest early, such as birth defects, but other adverse health impacts may not be observed until childhood or even much later as an adult. Many of the industrial chemicals that we are all exposed to can adversely impact health because they mimic, interfere with, or otherwise alter hormonal levels in the body. Hormones are chemical messengers that are used to tell the body to do certain things, and they are very important during development because hormones are used to orchestrate reproduction and development. Chemicals that interfere with our hormones are called endocrine disrupting chemicals. Examples of endocrine disrupting chemicals are flame retardants, such as polybrominated diphenyl ethers or PBDEs, stain repellent perfluorinated chemicals such as PFOA and PFOS, and plasticizers such as phthalates. Each of these groups of chemicals can interfere with reproduction or development in several different ways. For example, the flame retardant chemicals PBDEs, which are in the bodies of almost every pregnant woman in the United States, can interfere with thyroid hormone levels. Thyroid hormones are critical to healthy human reproduction. Higher levels of PBDEs have been linked to making it more difficult to get pregnant. PBDEs have also been linked to adverse pregnancy outcomes such as premature delivery, low birth weight, and stillbirth. Finally, because thyroid hormones are extremely important for proper neurodevelopment, exposures to PBDEs during pregnancy can harm brain development in the child, as measured by decrements in IQ. Another example of industrial chemicals that are prevalent in the bodies of pregnant women and children are the perfluorinated chemicals, which include widely used chemicals like PFOA and PFOS, used in stain-repellent fabrics, nonstick pots and pans, and even dental floss. We now know that exposure to PFOA during pregnancy is associated with reduced fetal growth, a very important predictor of child health. Another class of chemicals that is ubiquitous in our environment and bodies are phthalates, which are used to make hard plastic soft, such as in vinyl flooring, and which are also used in cosmetics and other scented products as a scent enhancer. Exposure to phthalates during pregnancy can increase the risk of adverse effects on male reproductive development because these chemicals can interfere with testosterone production. Testosterone levels are critical during pregnancy for healthy male reproductive development. Increased exposures to phthalates have been linked to subtle effects on male reproductive development that may have downstream implications and in increased risk of effects on male fertility. These are only a few examples of industrial chemicals that can have adverse pregnancy and other reproductive and developmental health outcomes. There are some things you can do to reduce your exposure to industrial chemicals and increase your resiliency, many of which involve little to no cost. For example, washing hands before eating, taking shoes off before entering a house, damp mopping regularly for dust control, using cast iron pans for cooking instead of nonstick pans, avoiding the use of pesticides, avoid eating processed foods, and don't microwave foods in plastic. These tips and more are covered in our UCSF series, Toxic Matters. 
But for many or even most exposures to industrial chemicals, individual action is not enough. For example, public policy is needed to make sure our air, water, and food are safe and free of toxic chemicals. There are also many legal, economic, and social justice issues interwoven into the distribution of environmental chemicals throughout our society that cannot be addressed by individual action alone. Thus, society-wide actions to prevent exposures are essential to our health. That is why doctors and other health professionals in the United States and around the world have issued a call to action to encourage prevention measures that support broad-based policy changes in exposure to toxic environmental chemicals that will lead to prevention for all.